So one of the things that you say, I think in uh, the more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. You say that our civilization is, phase, is facing a phase of transition, uh, a transition from an old story that you've called the story of separation to a new story, which you've used uh, the, the language of interbeing. You've also used the, the, the idea of the age of reunion. Um, so this, we're in, in, in your thinking, we're in this sort of transition between this old story and this new story. Now, I wondered, where do, where do we sit with that now in this present moment? You know, I'm, like we all are, anyone watching this is very aware that still in the middle of this uh, a COVID pandemic and all the issues that have arisen out of that, the, even the polarizations that have arisen out of that, people very careful, other people being, or you don't need to be careful, all kinds of views even about that. And then, of course, along with that, we've had the killing of, of George Floyd and then the, the focusing because of that of Black Lives Matter. And that's been in the US, but it's also been in, in the UK. Um, then, of course, over here in the UK, here I am in the London Buddhist Centre in Bethnal Green in London. You know, I was very shocked by the events in Washington surrounding Biden's inauguration. It, it, it seems, in a way, dark times. So where do this where where do we where does your story of this phase of transition from a story of separation to uh, an age of reunion where where are we in that story just now do you think yeah so yeah i think a lot of people have this sense that some big change is afoot it would be nice if the change were just going to happen to us and and <clears throat> like this this big transition is going to come in and rescue us from our current situation but i think it's actually more that in a process of of breakdown we are repeatedly invited personally and collectively to step into what i call a, a different story uh, which basically means a different worldview, a different identity, a different understanding of who am I, of what's real, of what is my life for, uh, what, is, what are human beings for, why are we here on this earth? And, and how, how do I do this thing called life? And how do we do this thing called civilization? What's the purpose of it? These are really deep questions. These are foundational questions. That, that are not addressed by merely doing what we've been doing a little bit more cleverly. And I think a lot of people share my view that whether it's the environmental crisis or political crisis or the, the psychological crisis, health crisis, all of these things, they're not gonna just disappear with the next invention or the next improvement, that some fundamental shift is begging to happen. But it doesn't mean it's going to automatically happen because of COVID or because of any external factor. But it's a, it's a choice that is presented to us more and more starkly as things fall apart. So part of the part of the the story there, there has many filaments that weave together, uh, and one of those is that progress, whether collectively or individually comes through exerting more and more effective control upon the world, which is necessary if, if we humans are the only conscious agents, the only intelligence in the world, and everything else is, is random forces uh, acting on generic particles. And, 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 and it's chaos, but we can impose order where there was chaos. We can impose intelligence where there was randomness and make the world better and make ourselves better off, safer, more powerful. We can maximize our benefits, work less, enjoy more pleasure, onward and upward, uh, being freed of these natural forces and the competing other beings out there. Like that's that's been, civilization's view of the road to paradise. And so, so you, you know, you asked about COVID, you ask about uh, the political situation. I mean, here we are, we are seeing more and more obviously the failure of control to bring about happiness. The, so COVID comes, like all of these crises, 
it's not like everything was just great and now we have some troubles okay like black lives matter uh like like police killing of of black people like that didn't just start with george floyd right that's been going on for a very long time and in fact um is less than it used to be but it's so it's not that something new started it's that it has come into public awareness health we we like modern societies especially the us but to a large extent great britain as well have been becoming less and less healthy over the last 50 years chronic diseases are are at unprecedented levels uh, mental health, uh, depression, anxiety, suicide, all of these things are, are getting worse with each generation. It's not like we were getting healthier and healthier and now all of a sudden COVID comes. Mm. But what, so, so the way that we respond to these crises, it's kind of schizophrenic. It goes in two directions. One is we double down on control because here comes just to speak of COVID, but I could apply this to, to political issues as well. Here comes COVID and now here's something that we can control. Like when it comes to autoimmunity, chronic health conditions, depression, it's not like you can, you can find the bad guy and wipe it out or insulate yourself from it. Like if you're suffering from depression, you, you, you can't like lock yourself in your room to keep out all the bad spirits that are making you depressed. That'll actually make you more depressed. If you, if you have a, an autoimmune condition, you can't cleanse your body of what, you know, germs and get better, like, because it's happening within. It's, it's your own self um, that's confused. So, so th these kind of crises that are not uh, amenable to control are very disturbing to the modern mind. So there was almost a sense of relief uh, when COVID came, because now we know what to do about it. Here's, mm. you know, and, and so all of these technologies of control are then deployed. Um, so, so <clears throat> yeah, excuse me, I, I don't see um, COVID as, um, like it's almost like a a, a um, return, <laughs> like it, it, it's almost short circuited an evolutionary process and brought us back to an earlier orthodoxy in our response to it. Um, but it also is, in a way, it's showing us the the um, destitution of the state to which we are, we have been headed. It shows us with even more clarity, what a society based on control and separation looks like. Um, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm wary of, of going on too long on this one topic, um, but, but again, like, like the Biden inauguration, like Washington DC full of you know, military and razor wire, like that whole scene, I mean, that's not the vision of America that, that we collectively held in 1945 and 1950 and 1960. It wasn't supposed to be this way. These mm. rancorous divisions, the, the, the hate, the paralysis, uh, the decay, uh, the, the civil strife. I mean, something isn't working here. And, and this, is, this is part of the breakdown of the story. It's this feeling something isn't working here. We were supposed to be in paradise by the incredibly futuristic year of 2021. Like that was science fiction. We were supposed to have, you know, robot servants in space colonies by 1990, you know? I mean, it was supposed to be a, this technological wonderland where every problem had been engineered out of existence. And so this engineered out of existence, like what does that actually mean? It means that you, apply control on a more and more minute scale and a more and more vast scale. Like you bring more and more of the world under control, under domestication, under the human intelligence. And, and you arrange everything to be perfect and just right just for us. And that program can be maintained only with greater and greater 
delusion. Mm. Mm. That's, no, I, I mean, I, I'm really struck by that, and I've been really struck by very much of what you've said along these lines. I mean, I still keep coming back to this sense of dark times, and I, I don't want to sound too pessimistic, but there does seem to be more and more polarization in some ways between, you know, the, the wealthy and the poor, between men and women sometimes, between black and white, um, you know, certainly between the, you know, the, but, but certainly between the right and the left. And yet when I read you and when I've listened to you, Charles, one of the things that strikes me, well, two things that strikes me, I think, is your, your confidence and your optimism. Um, rather refreshing um, to have that, uh, both that confidence and, and optimism. I wonder, can you say where that confidence, even optimism, comes from? Perhaps first in yourself as an instinct, because I think one of the things that's been striking me about your thought is that I think you've got some very, very deep instincts that you're trying to find a way of um, communicating. So I wonder where that optimism and, content, and confidence mm -hmm. comes from your instinct and where, yeah. where you see it in the world around you. <clears throat> yeah. So, it, it, so the, yes, the confidence and the optimism are not saying everything is going to be fine. We're taken care of by a higher power. Uh, the, you know, angelic beings are going to swoop in and rescue us from, <laughs> you know, all of our problems. It's not that. It is that we have the power to choose a different world. We are not helpless before the seemingly implacable forces arrayed against change, arrayed against healing, that in the mind that attributes change to force, that, that mind that says, well, it's obviously impossible. <laughs> Look at how powerful the, the, the banking industry is, the pharmaceutical industry, the military industrial complex, you know, the like white supremacy and patriarchy, et cetera, et cetera, capitalism. Like, look at how powerful they are. They've got all the guns. They've got all the money. They've got the media. They've got everything. How can we possibly do anything? It's hopeless. That view buys into premises that are actually part of the problem. That change happens when a superior force overcomes a weaker force. My confidence and my optimism is based on um, experiences and instincts, as you say, that supersede that worldview. Uh, that, and it's partly like, I wouldn't, it's like this instinct that I wouldn't be here if it were impossible. Mm. And all of the magnificent people I meet and all of the generosity and the courage and the beauty of human beings and of life, it wouldn't, it's not here just to go to waste. It's not really rational. I can't say how our society is going to heal. It's just that I know that it's possible. That's why I titled that book, The More Beautiful World Our Hearts Know Is Possible. Because mm -hmm. the mind might not know it's possible. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if you say, okay, Charles, come up with the plan. How's it going to actually work? Mm -hmm. uh, any plan that I could propose is going to be full of holes. It's, it's going to, and, and, and maybe you've had these moments where you have some reason for hope, but then the inner cynic just eviscerates that hope and points out all the ways it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, really anything worth doing is kind of naive. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I, I think in that book, I even have a chapter about naivete. Yeah. Like we need a little bit more of it to attempt what the mind says is impossible and to follow that invisible path where you, and it's not self-delusion. There is such a thing as self-delusion. Like you have some fantasy and, on, and, and deep down, you know that it's impossible. But there's also deep down, you know it's, that it is possible and you don't know how to get there. But, but if... There is, and this is what it comes down to, a, an intelligence beyond our own in the world. Not, um, not necessarily imposed upon the world by an external divinity, but an intelligence in all things. Then we no longer have to be in control of everything. 
in order for positive change to happen. We can become participants instead of engineers. We can ally our gifts with the process of healing and listen for what is ours to do and thereby become part of something that the mind cannot conceive of, something that we can't plan. That's where my optimism lies. Mm.